Welcome, Stephen. Well, thank you, Vincent. Nice to be here. <clears throat> Stephen, I was telling our, um, our engineer, John, that I, I'm quite fortunate because unlike many, many people behind the mic, um, I know, I know just about all of our instructors. I've met them and spent time with them, and, and you and I have spent time together. And, and it's, it's really, it's great. It's great to really know the person that you're uh, on the air with. You know, compared to getting a call from a, a book promoter saying, uh, well, we've got this guy, and he's written a book, and you need to have him on the air. And, and but so what's his name again? And then, and then uh, well, I haven't seen the book. Well, let me send you a book, and, and, and you can look at it, and then have him on the air. And have no idea who you're talking to. That's not the case here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you feel like a, a, a somebody, um, a real close friend. Like I, like there's certain people that you feel just comfortable with naturally, and other people that 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 natural comfort isn't there. And I just feel naturally mm -hmm. comfortable with you for some reason. Well, I've, I feel the same way. And by the way, uh, I have a rule. Uh, it's it's not it's not printed anywhere, but um, you know, I get calls like, "Why don't you uh, from?" Um, People are telling me how to uh, run the show, and they'll say, "Why don't you do point counterpoint? Why don't you, you know, have somebody you can argue with on the air?" <laughs> 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 and so I have this rule, <laughs> and the rule is if I if I don't like the person, he's not he or she is not coming on the air with me because life is too short, and and we've got we've got important work to do that you know we need to get the message our our message out, not their message. Their message is. You know, is not the right message as far as I'm concerned. So now let me see if I've got this right. So last time I was with you, you had so much energy, and I'm not exaggerating, class. And you're, if if my mathematics is correct, my arithmetic is correct, you're 56 years old, or plus or minus like almost, one. Is almost, that correct? yeah. At the end of this year, I'll be 56 in November. Yeah. 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 Okay. And. Um, and you are a dynamo. You've got a lot of energy, and uh, you fly. You fly to conventions and. Uh, and so you, you know, you put yourself at risk by doing so through all the toxins in the air, but still you stay extremely healthy. So here's my question. You know, many of us, many of us feel older, mm, slower, um, takes longer to heal. It hurts more when we bang ourselves up. Uh, as a farmer, I bang myself up, you know, uh, regularly. <laughs> Not that I want to. It just happens sometimes. And as we... What is it? What is it that makes us age, Stephen? Well, um, I'm glad you asked because it's a significant thing that you can do something about. Basically, it's um, the, the, there's been things proposed as the reasons for the cell's you know, aging process. Some of them is it's a decline of your hormone production. Some of it's that it's a, gen, a planned genetic uh, senescence that happens just programmed in the DNA. Some of it's free radical damage. And all those things do take their toll in this aging of the cell, but the most significant thing that's causing the cell to become less able to repair itself, less able to produce the hormones, enzymes, neurotransmitters, immunoglobins, whatever, <clears throat> is the shortening of the telomere. So you know, when you're born, the, the length of your telomeres on your DNA is extremely long. You've got like, I forget how many tens of thousands there are, but there's just a lot of these, uh, a lot of length to the telomere. And as each cell, as a cell divides into a new cell, there's a shortening of the telomere. So with each division, the cell is becoming a little bit older, a little bit older, until the point that when that cell becomes, that telomere becomes short enough, the actual repair process of the whole body slows down. There's just this lowered production of all the chemi chemistry of life, you know, the chemicals that make energy, hormones, neurotransmitters, proteins, whatever. They're going to go down in their production. So when you're trying to expend the energy and work eight hours a day, maybe physical labor that you used to be able to do 20, 30 years ago, you know, now you can't, you know, put forth that kind of energy without it being very stressful and maybe not even being able to do that much physical labor because there's just so much less adrenal hormone production, so much um, less growth hormone production. <clears throat> so in my journey to solve this with myself, because I got, I got biologically aged at an earlier age because of my mercury poisoning and the dietary experimentation I did that was like starving me for about four years. So I already knew what adrenal exhaustion was when I was 20. So I already knew what fatigue was and all those things at an early age. So I was already experimenting at an early age. So I learned about this product that basically you can take that increases the levels of your growth hormone. So that's a significant thing because 
the master hormone of the body that regulates all cellular repair is this polypeptide called growth hormone. So this, this substance is produced primarily from your pituitary gland, the, the anterior pituitary. And over 50% of the cells that make up the pituitary gland, they're called somatotropes, are supposed to produce this um, somatotropin hormone, also you know, called growth hormone. And you produce the most of it up to about age 18. So at age 18, you're producing your peak highest level of growth hormone. And from age 18 to 28, you can say you're in your prime with this growth hormone production. And this, what's going on is that you have approximately, according to Bill Downs, he's a really, really educated biochemist. And so he, he says that there's 372 trillion cells approximately to a human body. So each cell of the body has uh, receptor sites for the growth hormone. And when your growth hormone levels decline, the signal to the cell declines, and what the signal does is when the growth hormone comes in contact with the cells, it's communicating to the cell to open up and absorb amino acids. So that whole process is the key to enabling the cell to make protein. So once the amino acids come into the cell, the cell is able to synthesize the proteins it needs to make, whether that's proteins for its repair, whether that's proteins for its metabolic enzymes, whether that's proteins for antioxidant enzymes, whether that's just making metabolic energy, running the Krebs cycle, whatever. These are all protein-based equations that you have to have amino acids to do that. So when you continue to eat the same amount of protein, like you're 50 years old and you're eating this certain amount of protein, then you're 60, you're eating the same amount of protein, you're 70, you're eating the same amount of protein, but you're atrophying, you're becoming wrinkled, you're losing muscle mass. And so it's obvious that you're not creating the amount of protein you did decades earlier despite eating the same amount of protein. So the, the, the reason is because, one, is you're not digesting protein as well as you did when you were younger, so you're not getting protein broken down into amino acids as well as you did when you were younger, so you're starting to have a deficiency of amino acids in the bloodstream, and two is, is you lack the growth hormone to signal the cells to open up and absorb amino acids, so you're not getting the protein synthesis happening in the muscles or the skin, so the skin becomes thinner, more wrinkled, and all that stuff. <clears throat> so... This is a big, big thing that a person can do something about nowadays that, like I said, I was introduced to it about mm, 16, 17 years ago, this spray product that administers a peptide um, in a, del a spray delivery system into your mouth. So you spray three sprays in the mouth at bedtime, three sprays in the morning, and even three sprays in the afternoon if you have adrenal problems and you need more energy in the middle of the day. Hold it in the mouth 90 seconds, it absorbs, and that peptide goes into the body. It triggers your pituitary to produce growth hormone, and then that action triggers your liver to produce IGF-1. And IGF-1 is the main player, or the main actor in the um, ability to signal the cell to open up and absorb amino acids so that the cell can synthesize, synthesize protein. <clears throat> IGF-1 stands for insulin-like growth factor, so it's very similar to the role that insulin plays. So people who are diabetic, insulin insensitive, this can help them because it can help them to absorb their sugar into the cells better. You know, as, as you're saying this, I was thinking, uh, you mentioned uh, eight, the, uh, the, the key number, 18 years old. And um, that's, when, uh, that's when the military wants us. Uh, we are at, you know, pretty close to our strongest and, uh, and so forth. But I see, I see exactly what you're talking about as I look at people um, shopping and, you know, in the, when I'm out and about. As, it, as we get older, our skin starts to hang, our, our faces, uh, skin seems to sag, and, you know, Hollywood's got to repair for that. They've got people who uh, have knives and, and stitches that can put us back, you know, the way we used to look, but on the well, outside, but, but, but not on the inside. Holly, but a ho lot of Hollywood people, or excuse me for interrupting, but a lot of Hollywood people know about this, and they're using injectable growth hormone, or they're, and they're mm -hmm. using te injectable testosterone or whatever. That's how, you know, Sylvester Stallone and Harrison mm -hmm. Ford are still looking so in their prime, you know, and Mel Gibson and all those guys. Yeah, and and uh, Harrison Ford was one I was thinking about. He has eight airplanes, and he flies, and you know, so he he isn't just repaired on the outside, or, or at least you know, stitched up to look look younger. He actually uh, appears to have uh, a lot of the uh, a lot of his youth still. So, yeah, yeah, he's he's an impressive guy. So, do we know why why our um, growth hormones decline? Is that something we know the answer to? Yeah, it's the shortening of the telomere, as I was saying earlier. So basically, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah, that's, you were, that's, you were as, saying as that. It, so, they, so when you're 
18, you're but, producing your highest levels of growth hormone, but each passing decade, you, your growth hormone production declines by 14%. So consequently, mm-hmm. by the time you're 50, 60 years old, you have that much less repair power and that much less energy and all kinds of stuff. I mean, there's, this, this affects our brain and our brain chemistry. And I mean, the, one of the nice things I've experienced with using the Synergy One is that, you know, you get a significant improvement in your mood. It increases the beta endorphin production, which is like your own natural opiate. So you feel content, calm, clear-headed, and it lowers your anxiety brain chemical called dopamine. So you end mm-hmm. up getting rid of your anxiety but feeling clear-headed and calm and good mood, good energy. Mm-hmm. And, you know, what I was saying is that we know that our, our telomeres uh, get shorter every year uh, on, on average, but do we know exactly why? And, and you mentioned, uh, you know, it could be genetics, it could be... Uh, it could be the toxins in the air. Is, is it all of the above? Yes, and it's also the, the, the declining production of telomerase, because telomerase is the enzyme which lengthens the telomere. There you go. All right. We'll be back right after these uh, short commercial announcements. SGN80.com. Stephen, <clears throat> um, I'm looking at some of the statistics and some of the results of a study uh, from Dr. Daniel Rudman, MD. And uh, one, of the, one of the benefits to increasing uh, these levels, uh, these growth hormone levels, is increase in muscle mass uh, after six months without exercise, 8.8%. Yeah. Now, is that, are we saying that, you know, I, I, uh, I handle bags of feed, 50-pound bags of feed, and I carry them from here to there, and, and they haven't gotten... Uh, lighter but over the years and i'm thinking that if uh if they were 8.8 percent lighter because my muscle mass <laughs> increased <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what will happen you'll start to get like you know those uh popeye arms or uh the mm. arms that uh, harrison ford shows off in those pictures that yeah you'll gain the muscle without the you know you if you do stress weight bearing exercises in addition to that just from your farm work you're going to more likely gain it more than just the 8.8% because you're putting the load on the body, putting the demand there, but the actual growth hormone is there to assist in accelerating and creating the muscle mass needed to deal with that degree of manual labor. There you go. And uh, a class, I just I just started uh, this regimen, so I just want to let you know that I have started, but um, I haven't I've been on it long enough to tell you that uh, that I've increased muscle mass 8.8%, but I will, I'll let you know as, as, uh, as we progress. And now there are those, I'm not in this case, but there are those who, who, uh, increased their body size and you know, they probably don't want to, but, uh, we're talking about a, a 14.4% fat loss without dieting after, uh, six months. Yeah. So that's the other thing that's neat about this is that, you know, just like when you're younger and you have higher, higher growth hormone levels, you don't put on body fat, you stay pretty slim and sleek. I mean, that's not, not as true of kids eating junk foods, but if you're eating relatively normal foods growing up, then you stay pretty lean up until you get much older and your growth hormone levels decline. So, yeah, when you raise your growth hormone levels, which Synergy One does, and people have taken this and told us that they've increased their muscle. I've had guys call me and say that their biceps are bigger without exercise, that they've lost body fat effortlessly without dieting, um, and which is what you want. This is really the first, you could say, the first and most significant weight loss product that enables you to achieve the goal of increasing muscle, which is the substance which burns calories, while losing fat. Because when you do any other form of dieting, it's always a calorie restriction of some sort. People always sacrifice muscle and fat at the same time. So their weight loss is a combination of valuable muscle and fat, and that's what you don't want. Hmm. And Stephen, I can tell you that we have a friend who came over and he was telling us about this uh, vitamin mineral supplement he took, and he, uh, he he said, "I just don't like the taste of it." And I didn't quite understand that, but he he was adamant about not liking the taste of. And I'm not talking about one of your products. I'm talking about some somebody else's, uh, another company's. And he just flat out didn't like the taste of it and wasn't going to take it because of that. And I can tell you that there is absolutely no taste whatsoever uh, to Synergy One. None. Yeah, it's, uh, that's, it's, it's pretty simple. It would be like uh, spraying uh, the equivalent of spraying water in water. one's mouth. Yeah. Uh, just it's just like that. I mean, no yeah. no taste whatsoever. No no reaction. It's just it's it's neutral in uh, yeah. in that respect. Makes now, <clears throat> one of the other things I'm looking at is um, 
increased sexual performance. Now, the reason I'm mentioning this, and normally I, I, we don't talk about things like this on, on this broadcast, but there are plenty of commercials on, uh, on the media talking about this. So obviously this must be a problem or there wouldn't be advertising. Yeah. About it. Yeah, and they're they're usually trying to address it with drugs, and so they're they're not yeah. addressing the cause because you know God didn't make Viagra and God didn't make these other substances. So you know, you, you basically, if you want your body to be free of negative side effects, you have to work with molecules that God created and that are natural to the plant animal um, kingdom. And uh, that's why this is so cool because you're introducing something that is already required by the body. You're deficient in it by taking the protein. In Synergy 1 into your body, you increase your own growth hormone levels, so it's your own natural growth hormone, and then you get the consequent benefits, and so everything starts to work younger. So all the cells of the body from your immune system, they've taken HIV-positive people, totally help them. So I, and the sexual performance is another major benefit that happens for both men and women when they take Synergy 1. Yeah, that was the question I was going to ask you, because Kyle, uh, Kyle from Montana called, and he asked about... Uh, increasing the performance for women and their and their libido and, and you're saying yes That's right Is that big right? time yeah yeah all right we'll be right back Stephen, i'm looking at the list of um, of results that dr daniel rudman md uh found and one of them well it's a massive list um we're looking at regrowth of the heart, liver, spleen, kidneys, and other organs that shrink with age. Yeah, so, that's a big deal. Yeah, the, it is a big deal. Yeah, you, you re, literally grow back the you know the, the thickness of the walls of the heart, so your heart muscle pumps more easily, so your ability to actually exercise increases, and um, the liver. I mean, they've they've shown it increased the size of it. I think by seventeen percent, and the spleen has grown as much as twenty three percent. <clears throat> I have had two people on dialysis get off dialysis with this being the key ingredient that caused them to rebuild their kidneys and get off dialysis. So you're, you're, you're fixing all these vital organs as a result of increasing growth hormone, and then as a result, exercise is easier. You start to go exercise, and you actually build up your lung capacity as a result of being able to exercise and breathe more. Your lung actually can be rebuilt as well, so this is good for emphysema, good for uh, COPD, to be able to take, you know, increase growth hormone levels. So, yeah, it's a big, big, major game changer when you actually make your vital organs younger. You know, when you, when you talk about the lungs, you're, you're absolutely right. This is a, a, a big uh, game changer because uh, when you talk about COPD, people who have it, it's kind of a frightening thing not being able to breathe. I mean, yeah. it's, you know, from what I've seen, it's, it's quite terrifying. And uh, you're talking about also, uh, of course, you just mentioned the greater cardiac output. But tell us about the immune um, function changes, please. Yeah, they've done studies on uh, HIV-positive people, and basically it helps them to lower their viral load, increase their you know, immune markers, and regain competency so that they're no longer just deteriorating. <clears throat> so it's... Um, uh, and the other thing is that the thymus gland, basically the thymus gland is the largest when you're young, and it shrinks as it ages, and it's, it's a gland underneath the sternum of your chest. So it's part of your immune system because some of your white blood cells have to go through it and convert into T cells to be part of your immune system. So the stronger your T cell production is, the more um, stronger your immune system is. So this actually helps that, helps decrease the, uh, the function and, the, and potentially the size of the thymus gland. So it's a, it's a major, uh, and the other part of your immune system, of course, is your bone marrow where your red and white blood cells are produced. And so your white blood cells that form the, the uh, immune system white blood cell army, you're going to be nourishing the function and health of your bone marrow as well by being, uh, raising your growth hormone levels. And so let me see if I've got this right. This is uh, three sprays. You open your mouth, three sprays. Uh, let the, the, uh, the sprays... Um, and contact your the inside of your cheeks, and you just stay like that for ninety seconds before you swallow, and you're good to go. It's simple as that. Yeah. Is that right? Yes, exactly. Uh huh. Okay. <clears throat> Very simple. And, you do that at bedtime, and then you do it again in the morning. And I've recently discovered doing it in the middle of the day because I have a tendency for low energy adrenal problems in the middle of the day, and it's totally alleviating that so much so that I found myself going for a jog on uh, Sunday just. 
you know, which I don't normally feel like doing. I normally like bicycle or I'll walk, but I haven't felt like jogging lately. But when I've done this in the afternoon, I've all of a sudden got this energy and go the rest of the day. And you need less food, too, because your body's actually mobilizing fat for fuel. So you're finding yourself not eating as much. So you find yourself losing body fat and getting more defined um, from from having higher growth hormone levels. There was a... Uh a health and nutrition expert on the air many, many years ago on AM radio, and my mom used to to listen to him. This was back in the 1960s. His name was Dr. Carlton Fredericks of Fairleigh Dickinson University. And this was these were the days before uh, many broadcasters accepted calls live on the air. And he would read letters that came in, physical pieces of mail that came in to to his office, and he said, I have a, a letter here, and I'm paraphrasing, from one of our listeners, and, and she says, uh, Dr. Fredericks, how do you feel about exercise? And he's a guy that would be talking about a lot of a lot of the things that you talk about uh, in the early days. He was you know, starting to mention them, and, and, uh, and, and he said, well, you know, whenever I get the urge to exercise, I lie down until it goes away. Well, he died early. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen, he died early. <laughs> oh, That's man. sad. It, it's sad because um, he didn't, you know, take it to the next level. Uh, you know, the nutrition part he was doing pretty well on, but the the exercise part he 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 didn't like that, and literally he he passed away. In my opinion, way too early. Yeah. So, and and you know, when you talk about exercise, I you know I don't have a, a regular exercise program per se, but I'm really active on the farm. And I'm lifting and carrying and, you know, pulling fences and, and chasing cows. And it, so I'm doing, I guess, exercise as part of my yeah, daily doing, routine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I can't, I can't imagine, I cannot imagine not having the ability to do the things that I do as a normal course of, of being a farmer. What, you know, the, the opposite end of that would be just sitting or lying down on a recliner and watching television, which I, you know, that, that's totally unacceptable. So um, I'm glad to hear that, you know, we have a way to fix uh, the decline that all of us uh, seem to be experiencing with the, just the, the aging process. So there is, there is a way to slow it down or reverse some of the damage that we've done to ourselves or has been done to us. And um, one of the things is, uh, that's on this list is lowered blood pressure. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, they've done studies and shown that it lowers the blood pressure when you're increasing growth hormone levels. Um, I've had clients experience the same thing. They'll, you know, be on it for a little while, and their high blood pressure comes down. Um, the mechanisms that control blood pressure, um, there's several. So can't say exactly which one it is. I could just say that, you know, you are improving kidney health when you increase growth hormone levels. Kidneys produce the hormone called renin, which controls your blood pressure to a degree. Um, there's that uh, angiotensin-converting enzyme that's also part of it that might be more healthfully regulated. Um, but yeah, it's, it, you know, empirical evidence and studies show that people are naturally lowering their high blood pressure. And it's, and the other thing is that when people have hardening of the arteries, um, where there's calcification of the actual arterial wall, that's a different thing than high blood pressure. Like, so I like to introduce people to getting on to, um, like a vitamin K2 supplement with vitamin D and vitamin A, because, uh, that K2 has been studied and shown to help you to dissolve the calcium buildup in the arteries and remove calcium that's incorrectly deposited in your joints. So anytime calcium is incorrectly deposited throughout your body, that's, you know, we have a product called K2 Plus that people should be taking to help reverse that. Plus it helps to rebuild and remineralize the actual bones, teeth, all that stuff at the same time. So, <clears throat> But when you combine the raising of growth hormone levels with the proper vitamin mineral supplementation, you know, you can get miracles to happen because the vitamin minerals play their role and hormones play their role. So we've had people grow back their discs and their cartilage and their joints and reverse their osteoporosis and stuff doing this combination, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, you just mentioned um, remineralized teeth. Are you saying that uh, there can be tooth repair yeah. as a result of K2 yeah, Plus? Definitely. Yeah, you can, you can actually have the beginnings of a cavity. And if you use this, um, there's different ways to, to kill the infection, but one way that I would recommend or that I would do is we've got this product called Apex, and it's Apex stands for anti-pathogen um, to the extreme. 
because it's a <clears throat> the special silver solution that was created originally for an alternative to chlorine in swimming pools. But because um, if you have a swimming pool out in the open and you put this stuff in there, it'll get rid of the algae, but the reaction of the sunlight with the silver starts to discolor your pool plaster. So it doesn't, it's not appropriate. <clears throat> but when people used it internally, it, the unique thing about this silver is it's a sub-nanoparticle silver, so it's not a silver that will accumulate in your cells or in your skin and cause ageria. And it's surrounded or attached to oxygen. So there's lots of oxygen atoms attached to each sub-nanoparticle. So when people take this internally, it helps raise oxygen levels and deal with anything that, you know, which all these different diseases people have are related to low oxygen levels, whether that's viruses, fungus, bacteria, tumor cells, they're all low oxygen conditions. But people have taken and held this apex silver solution in their mouth that have a root canal jawbone infection, and it's totally killed the jawbone and root canal infection, and they get to keep their teeth, don't have to have their tooth pulled. So if a person had a cavity, I would hold that solution in my mouth to help antiseptize and kill the cavity infection. And then once the cavity infection is, is killed, you can heal the tooth. It doesn't, it's, at that point, it's a, it's a dead infection, and then it's just going to heal itself and be fine after that. Steve, when you were talking about the pool, and you're talking about uh, the tiles, so you're talking about the grout turning green. Is that is that what you were talking about? Yeah, I'm talking about the the, the 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 tile or the plaster of the pool getting algae in it, and an alternative way to deal with that was this product that was developed in the 1950s that was for the purpose of using an oxygenated sub nanoparticle silver solution to replace chlorine to get rid of algae. But okay. it only works if you use it in an indoor pool where there's no sunlight because the sunlight reacts somehow with the silver and starts to pigment the pool. Okay. We had, a, a, just as a sidebar, we had a, a pool when we lived in Virginia, and I installed a, a silver ionizer oh, so, wow. that we wouldn't, so that we would not have to use uh, chlorine because typically what would happen if you had an um, 18 by 36 or 20 by 40 pool, you would use about 80 eight zero pounds of dry chlorine per season and we installed this uh silver ionizer and um it worked really well it was it worked so well as uh, as you're talking about that you could see whether a dime was heads or tails in the deep end which wow. is about eight eight feet deep literally wow. absolutely uh what, what happened was you know people would fill their pool uh with city water right out of the or, you know right out of the faucet if you will, and uh, it would be discolored. People go, we drink that, and yeah, yeah right, they did drink that. Um, but what happened is if, if you installed one of these ionizers, it would clean that pool so you could still see at the bottom uh, a dime, whether it's heads or tails. And you're absolutely right, and it would discolor uh, the tiles a little bit, and it worked really well. So uh, born with a silver spoon in his mouth, putting a quarter, a silver quarter, and a quart of milk to keep it from uh, from going sour, you know, yeah, silver really works. We'll be right back. Now, Stephen, I just posted a previous um, broadcast with you and me uh, on the website, usaprepares.com, page one. It's a link to a YouTube uh, video, so it's it's there if you'd like to go see it. Class page one, USA prepares. Stephen, what about edema? You know the buildup of body fluid. Does uh, does uh, Synergy One um, impact that? Yeah, it does. The edema tends to be because the kidneys are starting to become declining in their function, so it's mm -hmm. not a good sign because uh, you don't want the kidneys to go down. But people have taken this and um, helped their kidney function come back, and then, yes, that, that gets rid of the edema. So, yeah, the Synergy One can help for that for big time. Okay, and, of course, we talked about faster wound healing, stronger bones. Um, what about uh, hair growth? Can you tell us yeah. about that? Yeah, it can happen for that, too, occasionally. Mostly I notice that with women report that, that they get a thicker head of hair coming in and a faster growing hair. Um, uh, this can help men, too. I just don't have any recall of them reporting that. But what, what both male and female have reported using Synergy 1 is that their gray hair reverses mm, sometimes 40%, sometimes mm, 80 90%, you know, within a few months of taking it. So, you know, the gray hair thing is 
is a good sign because that's a sign you're increasing your antioxidant levels in your body because gray hair is a sign of oxidized uh, pigments. So, there's, you know, too many free radicals in the body, too much oxidation going on. Some of the pigments that are involved in pigmenting your hair are called melanin. They become oxymelanin, oxidized melanin, so it turns your hair gray rather than keeping it its normal color. So if you're taking Synergy 1 and seeing your gray hair reverse, that's a sign you're you're increasing your antioxidants and making it so you have more melanin that's unoxidized. Mm-hmm. You know, I, a lot of people uh, are experiencing vision decline and hearing decline as they get older. What are, what are your reports telling you about uh, the... We've definitely uh, had people on the vision. So people have uh-huh. called us and said, you know, my eyesight's gotten much better and... Along with that, I've had women say that they actually, like, their, their eyes are looking prettier, like they have longer eyelashes and, and, and vision improvement. Um, and then as far as hearing goes, I haven't had anybody report that. Um, it, it can only help, but I've never had anybody report that. But, yes, it's, it's going to contribute to that. Okay. And what about, what about memory, Stephen? You were, you know, so many people are saying, you know, I, I went upstairs but I forgot what I went upstairs for. Uh, yeah. I, I went to the store, and, and uh, they get on their cell phone and say to their spouse, now, what was I supposed to get? What about memory? Yes, it definitely helps with that. It helps with mood and memory. So if you increase your growth hormone levels, you're going to repair your brain better. You're going to create neurotransmitters better. And your memory neurotransmitter, your primary one is acetylcholine. So it's important that you have some of those nutrients in the diet uh, in excess of maybe what you're getting from your diet. So I recommend supplementation sometimes. So um, sometimes, like I said, when people are older, their bodies aren't breaking protein down as well as they did when they were younger. So I recommend they supplement with amino acids to compensate. So there's 20 different amino acids in nature, 8 to 10 of which are essential. So I've got a formula called All Basic that that people can take that will give them about 19 different amino acids, uh, tends to improve mental clarity, blood sugar, physical energy, mood, all that. Um, and then there's this B vitamin product called, um, it's actually uh, grass juice powder. It's called Barley Max. So it's barley grass juice powder. It's got all the B vitamins. It's got all the vitamins except vitamin D. That seems to complement and help the effect of um, the utilization of the amino acids and mental clarity. And when you talk about mood, Stephen, I can tell you that uh, as I go through the checkout lines, I'll, I'll ask the cashier, are power people, are they uh, more grumpy, less grumpy, the same? They go, oh, no, 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 more grumpy. So there's no yeah. question that uh, that our moods are souring across the country. At least that's that's my uh, unscientific research. Class, if you'd like to contact Stephen Hewer, sgn80.com, 888-988-3325, 888-988-3325. Twenty-five, Stephen Hewer, thank you so much for being with us. I'm looking thank forward to Thank you for the to, interview, Vincent. Yeah, and, uh, and I'm going to report Synergy One as it impacts, affects me. We'll be right back. And Dr. Joel Wallach is with us for this hour. Dr. Joel Wallach, welcome. Well, thank you so much, Vincent. Always good to be with you. Appreciate you and all the great work you do. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Wallach, I want to share a, a quick story with you. So a couple days ago, the phone rang, and uh, Mrs. Finelli answered it, and uh, she was in the kitchen, and uh, she said, okay, could you hold on just a minute, please? Oh, he's right here. And so she put the person on hold, and she said, it's, uh, it's Ted Anderson for you. Now, class, Ted Anderson is the CEO of Genesis Communications Network, and I, I smiled at my wife and I said, "Thank you. Uh, I think I think um, <clears throat> I'm going to be uh, retired right after this phone call." <laughs> and, and it was Ted Anderson. Uh, he was traveling with you, and he was just confirming that you were going to be on the air with us today. And I thought, you know, I, I think I'm going to get fired. <laughs> and that's not what happened, Doctor Wallach. Yeah, no, you should probably get a raise. <laughs> uh, well, a- anyway, um, it's it's delightful being with you, and um, you know, I just want to share with our class that I have uh, I've I've uh, been at restaurants with you, and we've had uh, meals together, you know, like at, at dinners and, and so forth, and and I noticed that you are very very careful with what you eat. For example, I have never seen you 
eat commercial salad dressing. Is that right? That's correct. Mm -hmm. And I've never seen you eat French fries. That is correct. And I've never and I've never seen you eat fried foods. Can you tell us why? Well, um, first of all, you have to appreciate, Vincent, that there's thousands of failed medical theories every century in the 20th century, 21st century, no different. And cardiovascular disease uh, is said to be caused by consumption of cholesterol and saturated fat, and um, they began demonizing those things back in 1952 um, when Procter & Gamble actually gave the American Heart Association $1.7 million to demonize cholesterol and saturated fat, which was a, a, um, a universal um, content of things like lard and butter and cream and eggs. Uh, they were demonizing those foods so they could sell a, a product they had put on the market as a soap. They'd failed selling it as a soap. I'm talking about Procter & Gamble here. And they decided they were going to make a cooking chardonnay out of it. And they paid the American Heart Association 1952 $1.7 million, which is chump change today for big institutions. Back then, it was a lot of money, to endorse Crisco as a healthier way to cook and eat. Now, Crisco originated in 1901 as a smokeless, synthetic German diesel engine lubricant for submarines. And after the First World War, they didn't need it, so they sold it to a British soap manufacturing company. Couldn't sell it because people making their own soap. So in the uh, 40s, they sold it to uh, Procter & Gamble, and uh, they couldn't sell it as a soap either, so they converted to a cooking shortening, and they couldn't sell it because Grandma liked her butter and cream and lard and eggs. And so um, she began rejecting it. So Procter & Gamble decided they were going to demonize what she was using and say the best thing for your health was uh, this um, Crisco. Well, um, this is how cholesterol and saturated fat became our enemy. In fact, cholesterol and saturated fat are essential nutrients, and without cholesterol, you get low T, ED, Women get menopause at age 30 instead of 60. People get adrenal exhaustion and they get Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease is a cholesterol deficiency disease. It's a physician-caused disease. And so they, they created um, clogged arteries. They created arteriosclerosis, uh, plugging the arteries by changing from things that people have been using for thousands of years to Crisco. And Crisco causes inflammation. It's not cholesterol that plugs your arteries. It's inflammation. And inflammation is caused by things like fried foods of all kinds, processed meats uh, such as um, deli slices, sandwich meat, sausage, ham, bacon, bologna, salami, pastrami, pepperoni, jerky, corned beef. And then, of course, oils. Uh, we're talking about uh, microwave popcorn, uh, theater popcorn, olive oil, coconut oil, margins, mayonnaise, sausage, and cooking oils, and gluten, wheat, barley, rye, and oats. So you'll never see me eat any of this stuff. Because in one project I did for the federal government, um, for the National um, Institutes of Health, was 20,000 autopsies. And to make a long story short, I found that cholesterol had nothing to do with plugging the arteries. It was inflammation caused by eating all these bad foods, including, again, fried foods, processed meats, oils, and gluten. And so uh, having done all that work, why would I eat those things when I did 20,000 autopsies showing that they were the cause of cardiovascular disease, low T, ED, uh, menopause at age 30, and Alzheimer's disease. So I, I consciously have absorbed, have avoided these things since the 1960s. So we're talking 40 years plus. Dr. Wallach, if, if I remember correctly, and I believe I do, but I want to uh, share this with you. Uh, on a previous broadcast, I mentioned to you that uh, we have six chickens here at the farm. We just you know, bought some chickens and are raising chickens. And I said, we have six chickens. What should I do? And I believe you said something like this, and I'm paraphrasing. Uh, get more chickens and eat more eggs. Is that about right? That's right. Uh, everybody should be eating six to eight eggs a day per 100 pounds of body weight. And they cannot be fried, of course. Uh, they can be poached with a soft yolk. They can be soft-boiled with a soft yolk. Uh, they can be soft, soft scrambling butter. You can make omelets in butter. You have to watch omelets and scrambled eggs at restaurants because they make them out of oil as opposed to 100% real eggs. And so oil, again, causes trans fats and will plug your arteries. But whole eggs, cracked eggs, and I like to buy eggs in restaurants as poached eggs because then I can see the yolks and I know they're real eggs. And 
Um, I, I try to eat um, 8 to 12 eggs a day, and I, I'd say 99% of the time I get that done. Uh, this morning I had um, uh, four eggs and fruit and um, my supplements. Uh, this afternoon I'll just have a handful of nuts and some fruit uh, during my afternoon radio stuff. And then this evening I'll have steak and eggs and some red wine. Never any bread. Uh- Mm-hmm. Never any potatoes, except for sweet potatoes for breakfast sometimes. Right. I've never seen you have bread, and uh, I've never seen you have potatoes. Dr. Wallach, I remember uh, being with you in person, and uh, someone came up to us and said, you know, started a conversation with you, and, and said, Dr. Wallach, where do you live? And I believe your line was, your response was, Delta, Delta Airlines. Now, you're flying how many how many seminars uh, a year do you give, roughly? Uh, last year I gave over four hundred. I think I gave four hundred and three last year, um, Vincent. And uh, this year I'm on track to do the same or more. And uh, by the end of this year, we will be doing um, simulcasting, so that when I do a a event like we did last night uh, in Winnipeg, I'm in Winnipeg, Canada, right now. Um, it'll be simulcast around the world. We can do 3 million meetings in one night. And so uh, that's what we're working towards. We'll have it all set up by the end of this year. And, um, we're, you know, I actually have lectured in 55 countries, but it's still a minimal exposure compared to the needs of the world when it comes to nutritional information. And so we're going to make it available to everybody so I can be doing 3 million meetings every night um, by simulcasting and Skype and Periscope and go to meeting and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Four hundred and three. Um, ah. Now that's you know, that's more than one a day. Now that does not include that. Just that's just in person. That doesn't include your radio broadcast, and it doesn't include your radio interviews, does it? No, that is correct. I do not count those as as my meetings. Mm-hmm. Okay, and, and the reason I'm mentioning this class is no matter. No matter what stress level a person is under, I don't think he compares <laughs> to 403 plus, you know, right after you're, you're done with your, with your seminar, you hop on the radio, you do all, all kinds of broadcasts, including your own. And the reason I'm mentioning this is the average person couldn't do this. Absolutely impossible physically, mentally. You know, the stress of, of missing airplanes and the stress of, of the scheduling and, and all those phone calls that, that you have to take in, in, uh, in preparation for making all this happen. It's enormous amount of physical and mental stress. Now, I have seen, I have seen what you do uh, at a meal, and you take the very same supplements that you recommend that... Uh, those who are paying attention to you take. I've, I've seen it. I've literally seen it. And can you tell us a little bit about well, why you take those supplements and, and how, how they, I assume that that's, that's one of the reasons why you are physically and mentally able to keep this schedule going. And, and it's not like well, you've just done it once. You've been doing this for many years. Well, you're a shrewd observer of the physical world, Vincent. (laughs) That's exactly right. I've been doing it twice a day now for over 70 years. And in December, it'll be uh, starting my 71st year of doing these things. Um, And uh, and I I will tell you that um, I I realized this when I was a child. I had what would be called Tourette syndrome today, and doctors failed my family. They couldn't figure out what I had. They didn't know what to do. And my mom finally took me to the top eye doctor in St. Louis, and she said um, that um, my eyelashes were too long, and they were tickling my eyeballs, and that's why I was having all these facial cramps and oinking like a pig and that kind of stuff. And so I'm only nine years old, and I knew that couldn't be right. And so I said, uh, well, what are we going to do about it? And she said, well, here's a Maybelline eyelash brush. I want you to retrain your lower eyelids to go down, or your eyelashes to go down, your upper eyelashes to go up so they're not tickling your eyeball." And I said, no, no, I'm not going to do that. And so the next day I went to school and looked at a nurse's handbook and looked up um, things I couldn't find, eyelashes, eyelids. So I just went to the index of the nurse's handbook and went through the A's and B's, got down to cramps, and said, well, maybe it's a facial cramp. They heard athletes talking about cramps. And so I went to the page that said to go to, and it says it was a calcium deficiency. Well, every morning before the bus would pick me up to go to school, uh, off 
the farm, I would uh, be feeding the calves. We're going to sell at auction with uh, one of these big paper bags uh, full of um, alfalfa pellets had calcium in them. And I'll tell you the rest of the story when we come back. Okay, Dr. Joel Wallach's with us. And uh, so who's Dr. Joel Wallach? Well, he's a he has a doctorate in veterinary medicine, a doctorate in neuropathic medicine, postdoctorate fellowship in comparative pathology, a 1991 Nobel Prize nominee, and more. We'll be right back. Dr. Wallach, you were talking about Tourette's syndrome and... And that's a yeah neurological uh, disorder, and it's it's characterized uh, by involuntary movements and vocalizations called tics. And I I remember having a friend uh, in Virginia who had Tourette's, and and he might be at uh, at you know uh, shopping in a large uh, store, and he might you know just in, have an involuntary expression. He might see someone that's overweight, and he go, "Wow, you're a big girl," and he just keep going on and it, those kinds of things would happen as well as the facial movements and the and the hand gestures please continue okay well just to make it short here uh so we can get to the real part of this uh, interview um I, I read in that um, nurse's handbook that um this was caused by a calcium deficiency i was looking at the analysis tag on the little um alfalfa pellet bags and i'm feeding these calves that were going to auction uh, at the um uh, auction barn on the weekends, and see it had calcium. So I immediately started eating handfuls of these alfalfa pellets. I had had Tourette's syndrome for five years. It started out when I was four, and by the time I was nine, I was disabled. And uh, all my friends at church knew I was um, possessed by the devil. (laughs) Back then, um, it was quite a thing. And nobody really knew what it was. They didn't even have a name for it back then. And so um, uh, I started to put in my cereal bowl for breakfast, threw the cereal out to the yard, chickens, and putting milk on my little alfalfa pellets. And my mother was horrified. She said, well, that's animal food. You can't eat that. My, my dad said, let him try it. Nothing else is working. Well, in three days, as God is my witness, I was cured. After five years of getting worse, 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 in three days, taking those little alfalfa pellets designed for calves, that had the minerals in it, including calcium, I was cured. It just went away. Bam, woke up in the morning, it was gone. After five years, of getting worse, worse, worse. So I knew when I was a kid, when I was nine years old, that there was something to nutrition and that uh, somehow the animals were getting a better deal than people. And one more piece here. Well, why is it that we're having trouble with our nutrition? It all started at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Monday, September 4th, 1882, on Pearl Street in New York City. Uh, that's when Thomas Edison pulled the switch in the first commercial electric generating plant. And again, to make a long story short, um, within 10 years, every town, every municipality, and every city in the industrialized world had switched and converted from wood as a universal fuel to electricity. Well, prior to that, um, wood ashes were used in the garden as fertilizer, and most people thought they were ashes. That's what for 5,000 years they call them wood ashes. But really, wood ashes are 95 to 98 percent the minerals of the tree had sucked up out of the ground, you burnt the wood, the powder that was left was 95 to 90 percent the minerals, and maybe 5 to 2 percent was the carbon that didn't burn, so it turned the mineral powder gray or black. Threw it in the garden, the garden flourished, more more yield, but also the plants, the pumpkins and the squash and the okra and the tomatoes and beets and potatoes and onions and corn and peas and beans and so on would suck up these minerals. Unknowingly, for 5,000 years, people were getting their mineral supplements by eating vegetables and fruit that were fertilized with wood ashes. And when we switched to electricity, that all went away. And that began our downward spiral um, because there's no more wood ashes left over in your home when you use um, electricity to um, uh, run your house. Okay, and so there's no more more, um, wood ashes put in the garden. Then they came up with fertilizer that only had three nutrients in it. And the people who lived the longest were ones that had the most minerals in our soil where the trees grew. And that's where they got all these minerals. Well, they didn't know it. Nobody supplemented. And people liked electricity, so politicians came up with the TVA, Tennessee Valley Authority. They came up with the, with the Hoover Dam in the Colorado River, many other big uh, dams for electricity. And it cut off the food supply to the soil in, in the bigger farms because the, the most fertile land 5,000 years ago, and yet today, are floodplains where there's big rivers and would flood every spring, and when the flood water recede, leave silt behind, which are minerals from mountains, hundreds, maybe even thousands of miles upstream. Once flood control came, along with the dams to make electricity, at first everybody was happy about flood control because they didn't realize it cut off the food supply to the, to the farms. 
because when the floodwaters would recede every spring, that silt was plowed back in the soil to um, renew the mineral supply. That's all gone now, so you must supplement. You cannot escape it. You must supplement. Otherwise, your kids will die before you. You'll die long before your time, and doctors just get rich. And that's why only dead doctors don't lie. We'll be right back. Joel Wallach's with us on Infinitely. That's Dr. Joel Wallach's with us, and he was talking about uh, natural flood areas, low areas uh, where silt uh, tends to flow. And, and I can tell you right here on the farm, that is prized farmland where the silt ends up. It's usually flat area, and uh, the plants, the grass, and the trees grow best right there. There's no question about it. And uh, we harvest the wood uh, from the dead dead trees in that area. We burn them in our outdoor wood furnace and those ashes go right into our garden exactly as Dr. Wallach was talking about. Dr. Wallach, I'd, I'd like to share a very quick story with you about something that happened to me and uh, I used one of your products, and here's what happened. So, as, uh, as our class knows, we've had many, many expos, and you've been to a bunch of our expos. Well, for about the, la- the two weeks prior to the expo, it's a really hectic time here at the farmhouse because uh, we are scheduling and rescheduling and making changes and signing people up and taking a lot of calls, and there's no sleep for the two weeks before the expo. So the expo is a Friday sat- Friday setup, Saturday and Sunday event, and uh, it's a, a fly-in, a drive-in. We have uh, people from uh, 44 states, six countries come in, and uh, a number of our instructors stay at the house, and including the freeze-dry guy. And uh, so he stayed over uh, the full expo, and he was here Monday morning, and he, were, he and I were on the air on Monday morning right here at the studio in the farmhouse. And so... Uh, 15 minutes into the broadcast, he said, Vinny, you're, you're really not yourself. This was, you know, during the commercial break. And I said, I can fix that. I'll be right back. I was absolutely exhausted. And uh, I ran out of the studio, went into the kitchen, uh, had a, uh, a glass of Beyond Tangy Tangerine. And within a few minutes, I was back and awake and uh, at, my, uh, at my normal level of energy. So I wanted to share that with you. That's how fast it works. And that's your product, Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Is, are you hearing stories that you know, are equivalent to that? Oh, yes. Uh, that's our basic core product. It has 245 nutrients in it. 245. You look at these multiples on the market. You, they say complete nutrition. They have 28 nutrients. Ours mm-hmm. has 245. Uh, 78 minerals. Most of the ones in the market, they have com- complete nutrition. They have six minerals. Um, a human being, all vertebrates require 60. And so, actually, we make it up as a big, as a liquid, and then we freeze dry. And so, it's the same technology as coffee crystals. It, it instantly uh, goes into um, a solution, and some pieces go into suspension. And it's a wonderful uh, core supplement. Of course, we add a few things to it. Uh, including the omega-3 essential fatty acids and some extra minerals and things uh, for our core product, so, which is our base. And then we have what we call secret sauces that we add to that for over 900 different diseases. So you have the BTT, Beyond Tan Tangerine, the original flavor, which the name implies, tangerine, and then the 2.0, which is a peach flavor. And um, so it has a few other little things added to it. And uh, it's been a wonderful product. And doing that concept, uh, since um, I was nine years old. And when I've seen you at restaurants, you will have your supplements, and you will drink Beyond Tangy Tangerine. That is correct. I uh, drink a dose twice a day, and I add several other things to the liquid. And then, of course, my pills, tablets, and capsules. I'm taking all the secret sauces for 900 different diseases twice a day. And um, I don't expect everybody to do that. If if everybody were just to take the 90 essential nutrients, which is what we call the healthy start pack, which is the core of which is the Beyond Tan Tangerine, either the original uh, tangerine flavor uh, or the 2.0 peach flavor, um, they're going to be a winner. Um, again, our foods do not have the nutrients in it. Um, the fertilizer that's um, traditionally, no, I shouldn't say traditionally, the fertilizer is commonly used uh, since the 30s after the Dust Bowl uh, because the soil was dead when we dammed up all the rivers, no more wood ash going into the soil, the soil was dead. So they came up with a fertilizer uh, called NPK, and everybody calls it, it's an artificial fertilizer. And plants only require three nutrients from the soil to give you a good harvest and give you good seeds for the next generation. 
and um, all vertebrates, including human beings, require 60 minerals. So if you're only giving the plants three and everything else has gone out of the soil, where are you going to get the other 57? And certainly not from eating more or a bigger variety of green leafy things because they only get three unless you're putting your stove wood ashes and and uh, your compost and things like that into the garden. Well, I still believe everybody should supplement with the 90 cents of nutrients, and then whatever you get from your food is a value-added thing as opposed to hoping and praying. Uh, the way most people do it, based on their doctor's comments, just eat well, you get everything you need. An equal sort of approach to, to uh, combustion engines would be you put six quarts of dirt from Texas in your car instead of, or your truck or your tractor instead of six quarts of oil, because everybody knows there's oil in Texas. So if you're, eating, if you're putting six quarts of dirt from Texas into your vehicle, much cheaper than six quarts of oil, you're going to get everything your, your vehicle needs. Well, that's not true. You wouldn't do that. Nobody would be that stupid to do that to a combustion engine, put six quarts of dirt from Texas in there, yet they think they can get everything they need just by eating well. You know, I, I, as I hear you say that, I was thinking about uh, you and I were sitting at a, at a booth at uh, one of our meetups uh, years ago, and I mentioned to you that uh, and I sit behind the, mic, uh, behind the microphone for two hours a day, and, and I prepare for two to three hours so I'm behind the computer screen for oh four or five hours a day, and I and I mentioned to you that my eyes burn, and uh, and it was you know it was uncomfortable, and you said oh I can fix that, <laughs> and I kind of smiled, and he said de stress and t- just take some de stress, and uh, class that's that spelled the letter D hyphen S T R E S S, so I began taking de stress years ago. I take it with every meal, and uh, my eyes don't burn. Uh, they they stopped burning within a couple days of taking de stress. Um, Doctor Wallach, is is that common? Well, yes, of course. That's what we call de stress because it covers a lot of stressful things, and of course, it's uh, it's one of those secret sauces we add to the basic ninety, the healthy start pack. And of course, I take three three times a day myself, being on the road and doing the, as much as I do, and. Um, There are certain nutrients we need a lot of, and um, they're not in our food anymore. And so if you don't supplement them, you're in trouble. And, of course, our kids suffer the most. Uh, They eat all the fried foods. They eat all this bread. Uh, They eat um, uh, salad dressings and vegetable oils and cooking oils and mayonnaise, you know, things like uh, ham salad sandwiches and egg salad sandwiches, that kind of stuff. And this is why our kids are dying before us. Um, Even the government says that our children will be the first generation of Americans that do not live as long as their parents. And this is very scary. And so we really have to clean up our act and what we're eating, get rid of the bad stuff, uh, the things that uh, actually cause problems, again, like trans fats, heteropsychic amines, and acrylamides. I said that in 71, not only after my 20,000 autopsies, not only did um, they they, uh, cause... Indirectly, they cause the plugging of your arteries because they cause inflammation in the arteries, and your arteries then make scar tissue, which plugs themselves. But also, they increase your risk of cancer, the same as smoking two packs of cigarettes a day. So even if you never smoked, you get lung cancer by eating bacon for breakfast every morning or having a ham salad sandwich for lunch every day. And if you smoke and you um, uh, fry foods and eat processed meats, you're going to get cancer. It's as predictable as gravity. And even the World Health Organization came out last year and said that in October of 2015. I'd been saying it since 1971. Dr. Wallach, what do you recommend for someone who has high blood pressure? Okay, well, there's uh, well, maybe a handful of causes of high blood pressure, none of which are genetic. It's not a genetic thing. It's certainly not caused by salt consumption. And so what I like people to do is, again, avoid the bad stuff so you're not causing PAD, peripheral artery disease. It's, uh, the blood system is like a hydraulic system. You, you know about tractors and front-end loaders and backhoes and things like that. So um, when you want to lift the bucket, you have to make the space smaller and yet keep the volume of the liquid the same so the pressure goes up. Well, the same thing true, which is a bad thing in your, in your arteries, when you get PAD, peripheral artery disease, where you get... Um, clogged arteries in your fingers and toes and your, on your carotid arteries, your neck, and places like that. The pressure goes up because your heart has to work harder to get um, blood through there because the, the hole is smaller. And so um, you have to get rid of the stuff that causes that. No fried foods, no processed meats with nitrates, nitrites, no oils, and no gluten, no wheat, brown, and oats. All that's got to go. Secondly, uh, you get high blood pressure. 
from just a deficiency of certain minerals. So you take all 90 essential nutrients, including all 60 essential minerals, that helps the blood pressure go away. So what we do is when somebody has high blood pressure, um, they got to get on the, the diet, they got to get rid of the fried foods, the processed meats, the oils, gluten. And then in addition to the Healthy Start Pack, those 245 nutrients that's in the Healthy Start Pack, we also add some extra of what we would call the ultimate um, daily classic tablets and the ultimate cardio sticks. And the ultimate cardio sticks and the ultimate classic tablets are designed to support healthy blood pressure and support healthy blood flow through blocked arteries. And even people who run um, kidney dialysis, um, there's nothing wrong with their kidneys, but their little arteries are plugged to bring the dirty blood into the filtering units. Their blood pressure goes up, and so we change their diet, get rid of the bad stuff, get them uh, again on the um, Healthy Start Pack, which is our basic 245 nutrients, and then we throw in the ultimate daily classic, the ultimate um, cardio sticks, and it supports healthy blood flow through those small arteries. And we've had people that haven't even urinated in 10 years, Vincent, been on dialysis six uh, days a week for 10 years, and in a month's time they're urinating, and two months' time they're off their dialysis. So so, um, you support the body. It wants to heal itself. And even blood pressure um, from those three main causes, um, plugged arteries going to the kidneys, plugged arteries in your periphery, peripheral artery disease, PAD, and then also mineral deficiencies, you address all three of those problems and high blood pressure comes down. You don't need to be on the medication anymore. You know, uh, you, you met my mom here at the farmhouse, and um, she has had uh, CHF for years, and you recommended that she take de-stress as well. So she takes de-stress with every single meal. And I can How's tell you How's her congestive that, heart failure? It, I'm sorry, what's that? How's her congestive heart failure? Well, uh, <laughs> well you wouldn't know she has it. Uh, <laughs> well, she doesn't uh, anymore. Yeah, uh, she, she well, here's, uh, well, here's goes the deal. out. Yeah. I was going to say, we've known for 300 years, Vincent, that congestive heart failure is caused by deficiency of a single vitamin. It's actually discovered by a Japanese naval surgeon 300 years ago. And so that vitamin is in the de-stress. And so in addition to the healthy start pack, you have congestive heart failure, you throw in the de-stress capsules. Guess what's going to happen? You're going to be a happy camper. Well, I can tell you, my mom, uh, you know, had that heart cough, and uh, that's all but gone. Uh, For years, it's all but gone, and she's been on uh, de-stress. Dr. Wallach, I went to uh, my uh, physician's office for a checkup many years ago, and and here in Missouri, and it's exactly as you said. I said, well, you know, what should I be doing? Should I change anything in my diet? And he goes, no, 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 no. You, you get everything you need from your food. Whatever you eat, you, you just, you know, you're doing fine now. But you've gained five pounds. And I, I said, have you been to the waiting room? Have, have you have you walked out there and seen uh, who's out there? I said, <laughs> I said, five pounds. Are you kidding me? I'm within a couple percent of my high school weight, and you know I'm I'm five seven, uh, 138 pounds, and and he's worried about five pounds. And I, I said, have you seen the waiting room? And uh, so I guess he understood what I was talking about. That you know everybody was much much larger uh, than I. So. Um, Dr. Wallach, uh, what what thoughts do you have that you'd like to share with us? Well, uh, we have epidemics uh, of diseases going on here, ones that are not infectious. There's an epidemic of diabetes. It's a type 2 diabetes is caused by deficiency of a single mineral. We've known that for 85 years. And so um, these nutrients are not in our food anymore because we're not putting wood ashes in. We're not getting the silt from floods anymore. Uh, obesity has nothing to do with lack of exercise or Eating too much. Uh, obesity is a deficiency of a class of nutrients. Any one of those nutrients that are missing, you're going to gain weight. There's three of them. If you're missing any one or two of those three uh, nutrients in another class, you're going to be the 400, 600, 800, 1200 pound person. I deal with literally thousands of those people every year in that, that big weight class. And they'll lose, everybody can lose a half a pound to two pounds a day just by taking the 90 essential nutrients with a little secret sauce we call ASAP to support healthy weight loss. You lose a half pound, two pounds a day, and the magic is you'll never gain the weight back. Then another uh, epidemic disease we have is uh, called arthritis. Uh, it certainly is not genetic. It has nothing to do with age. Um, osteoporosis occurs in men. Uh, it's not only a woman's thing. Uh, these are simple uh, deficiencies, a combination of vitamin and mineral deficiencies. 
And we have programs for these, you know, for instance, uh, to support and promote healthy maintenance repair of our musculoskeletal system, we have the Healthy Bone and Joint Pack to support uh, healthy weight management and getting rid of the excess weight a person might have at a half a pound, two pounds a day. We have what we call the Healthy Weight Loss Pack, not, not too complicated. And then people who have um, diabetes, type 2 diabetes, which makes up 98% of the diabetic population, Right now, 41% of Americans have diabetes or are pre-diabetes. 41% in California is 55%. That just came out from UCLA. And that's a deficiency of a single mineral. And so if you supplement with what we call the a healthy blood sugar pack, it's going to give you the 90 cents of nutrients plus extra of that one mineral. And that supports healthy blood sugar levels in the, in the blood, obviously, healthy um uh, sugar and carbohydrate metabolism at the cellular level, and people will lose the weight, and they're able to wean themselves down with, with their blood test, monitoring their blood sugar. As their blood sugar and A one C hemoglobin um, goes away, uh, they can uh, re- get you know wean themselves off their medication. Now, here's the deal, Vincent. We actually have what we call a trilogy of books. Let's play doctor. Let's play herbal doctor. The passport aromatherapy covers 900 different diseases and how to prevent and reverse them with vitamins and minerals and herbs and aromatherapy oils and, and trace minerals and rare earth uh, amino acids. Again, that's uh, Let's Play Doctor, Let's Play Herbal Doctor, and the Passport Aromatherapy. Every family should have these books. They should have family meetings every month about the family's health. Everybody of all ages, even little three-year-olds, need to sit in on this. And um, we're going to solve the problem. If you just depend on going to a doctor when you get sick, um, we're gonna, not going to make it. Dr. Wallach, very quickly, in the last few seconds, homosexuality is on the increase. What are your thoughts on why? Uh, It's a preventable thing. It's actually a nutritional deficiency during pregnancy. Uh, It's totally 100% preventable. You can't put the genie back in the bottle once they're born, but it is preventable. And it's in the book, Epigenetics, How to Prevent It. It's called Epigenetics, the book, teaches you how to prevent homosexuality. Dr. Joel Wallach's been with us, class, and if you'd like to call and uh, get some of these materials and supplements... And books, 417-863-7149. 417-863-7149. Ask for Jim. Dr. Joel Wallach, thank you so much for being with us today and sharing uh, this important medical information. Hey, appreciate your hospitality, Vincent. As always, look forward to being at uh, Class, your events again. I'm a survivalist.